Hi, so if you've got a MIDI mixer and you weren't lucky enough to have a device that has a built-in profile, you can still do absolutely everything. It just takes a minute to set it up. And once it is set up, it's done for life. And if you set it up well, you can come and share it on the Discord and it'll be built in as a preset in the software for everyone else that might have this device to use. Um, I mean, this also counts if you have a custom homebrew device that you built yourself on some random Arduino controller. You can still set it all up to work exactly how you'd expect. So if I head to the Profiles tab here, on the right, I've got a list of presets. None of these will be highlighted if you're here watching this video. And then a list of custom profiles on the left. Now, mine looks a bit busy, but truthfully, yours will be completely blank. If you hit the plus button, though, you can create a new one. So I'll create one called my custom device. I can select it and we have a big old empty profile, which is no groups and no controls. So before we get into anything else, we have to try and load my profile. If I load it, it says no input selected, which is fair enough because there's no input selected. Now, the input and output for each profile defines what, um, what device MIDI Mixer will listen for input from and what commands it will send back to the device. So, oh sorry, which device it will send commands back to. Um, so the output ends up being for things like LED lights, volume indicators in the future, VU meters, peak meters, um, anything that gives kind of that hardware feedback for the audio state of your system. So for these purposes, I only have this device connected, which is my X-Touch. So I'm going to select that as both the input and the output. And now if I load, we've got a profile loaded. Awesome. Unfortunately, it's completely empty. So there's no groups, there's no buttons. I can't do anything with it. So let's address that. We'll go back to the custom device. And the very first thing we'll do is we'll create a group. This is a completely blank group and we're just going to go through this for a second. So a group is what you assign things to in MIDI Mixer. So you would assign an application to a group and that group is now available to control the volume of or mute or run that particular application. So we've just created a group here called new group. It's got nothing assigned to it. But if we go to groups, we can see it's there. It exists. And I could assign Google Chrome. Now, I have no way to control it because I haven't given the group any controls. Um, so I can't actually control Google Chrome yet, but the group is assigned. Let's head back into the profile we made and look at kind of which controls we can assign to this. We've got volume controls. So these are typically faders or rotaries. Volume indicators. So in an ideal world, this would be motorized faders, but if you don't have a lot of money. Um, LED indicators, like me. <laughs> um, we have mute controls, which are most often buttons, which you press and it will mute whatever it's assigned to. Assign controls, meaning if I press this button, the group that this button is in will now be assigned to whatever window is in focus. Really useful for having one that's just ready to control a particular application. Um, I end up switching mine around at the beginning of a work week every time to assign it to Teams instead of Discord and things like that. Um, and finally, run, which is for if the application isn't running, let's say my group is assigned to Spotify and I hit the button in that group, the, the run button, it will then boot up Spotify so that I can start using it. Little things, really useful once you get into the habit of it. So as we can see, I can't assign anything here. And I, to do that, I have to make a control. So we go into this controls tab on the left and it's completely blank, but we'll make a new one. Now it's a similar sort of interface, but we've got three types here. We've got a fader type, a button type, and an indicator. And they're exactly what you'd expect. A fader, a button, boop, and an indicator would be an LED indicator. So LEDs around here. It could also be um, a motorized fader. It could be a VU meter. It could be the LED behind a button. So let's start on something that every single person will have, which is a button, right? Even if you have a big old drum pad that doesn't have any faders, you're gonna have a button. So let's go all the way over to this first knob here. I'm gonna create a button control. I'm gonna call it knob one button because it's completely unmarked apart from the number one for me. Um, knob one button. And I can just hit learn entire control. Now if I hit that, it's 
lo and behold, learn the entire control. It's figured out how to trigger it. Um, now, it's worth mentioning, if you have a drum pad um, or something like a, a, a launch control, like an innovation launch control where you've got a big old thing of, of pads, it's very likely they're velocity sensitive. Now, the ones on this board are not, right? It's it's all or nothing. But if you do have something velocity sensitive, you can enable this option and this value turns from the push value to the minimum. So then you could set that to one. So even the slightest tap would actually trigger it. Um, just a note, if you have pads and you find you're having to hammer them as hard as you can um, in order to mute, there's, a, there's an option for that. Also down here, we have automatic indicator. Now, if your board is well designed, which is why these boards um, and things like the nano control tend to be much more popular because they're very well designed. Um, you can turn on automatic indicator and MidiMix will now understand how to control the LED behind the button too. This doesn't always work, especially with the cheaper Chinese boards, but for the most part, this is absolutely fine. So we've now got one control and it has an automatic indicator. If I go to the groups again, um, I can't use this button to control volume. That's fair enough, right? But I can use the control mute. So if I hit the mute drop down, I can select knob one button and indicators knob one button auto. So this is an automatic indicator for this. So now that's the case, let's just remind ourselves, we'll go back to the group tab. We're definitely connected to Google Chrome. Now, I still can't change the volume of it, but I can mute it and I can unmute it. So every time I mute it, the button is highlighted. And every time I unmute it, the button is off. Perfect. And this works both ways, right? So if I go into my volume mixer here and I mute, you'll see the light turning on and off as the actual application is muted. Really, really cool. So the next thing that everyone is going to have is faders, right? Everyone's got a fader. So in my group here that I call new group, let's actually just name this knob one um, because I'm now making the group for this first knob, right? Um, and I want a volume control. I want to be able to control it with this rotary, right? So let's go into controls. We'll add another one. We'll call it literally just knob one. It's a fader type, yeah. And we'll learn entire control and I'll spin it. So we've got the channel, we've got the control, we've got the command. And these options down here, you need to consider. So for the most part, if it's an absolute control like this, um, you can just leave all these values absolutely fine. Whereas on this particular board, these rotaries are infinite. There's there's no, you know, zero to, to 100 or anything like that. It's It goes forever in whichever direction you choose, which means I need to use this infinite rotary option. If I hit enable here, we get some more controls and some more learn keys. Now, we've got lowest down value, lowest up value. If you've made your own device, you probably know what you're doing here, but there's learn controls too. So if I hit learn or down, it says turn the infinite, infinite rotary, one click down. So I'll do that. Perfect. And if I learn up, turn the infinite rotary, one click up, and I turn it up. Perfect. So now we've got a channel, a control, a command, we've got all the values set. And if we go back to groups, we should be able to assign it, which we can. And now this knob will control the volume of Google Chrome. Flipping awesome. And remember, we can still mute it with this button and change the volume while it's muted and unmute and all that kind of jazz. Cool. So over here too, I've got this big old fader. This is way simpler, like I said, than doing the infinite rotary stuff. So if I wanted to add a control for that, I could add a master fader control, learn entire control, push it down and it's done. If we go to groups, I could assign the master fader to also control the knob one group, right? So we've still only got one group. It's just called knob one. But now not only does this knob control it, but also the master fader controls it as well. So these groups are literally just groups of controls and nothing more. So you can assign, you know, you could assign 20 different mute buttons or you could make it so that, you know, you only have an indicator for the mute button and nothing else. Uh, or maybe once you, you know, move the volume of something to 100%, all of the lights on the board light up. The, you know, the sky is the limit when it comes to this, and it's up to you to be creative when you're when you're doing it. For the most part, though, 
I'd expect that you'd have one in each of these things because that's the, that's the sensible thing to do. <laughs> so in that um, in that spirit, I'm going to create a master fader group and assign the master fader um, control. And now in groups, I've got knob one. I've also got master fader. So master fader I could assign to my main device, which is cool. Um, and we can still control Google Chrome and all that kind of thing. And we can still mute Google Chrome. Um, so that's instantly buttons and faders accounted for. We've already got those in. Um, I mean, the realistic thing to do from here is to go through and add that for all of them, right? So I'd add a group for, for knob two, knob three, knob four, through to eight, map all of these faders, map all these buttons, you're done. But we do need to go a little bit deeper with lights. And in fact, I take that back. One thing to note here is that if I go to the buttons tab, we have available and in use. Um, if something is in use, it cannot be used as a generic button. Now, a generic button is only used for things like uh, play, pause, stop. Um, you could use it to run a particular file. That could be anything from running an auto hotkey script to opening Spotify to opening your favorite JPEG if you wanted to. Um, there's people using this stuff for, for a load of crazy things. There's one guy controlling light intensity of his Philips Hue setup um with this with this application it's like i said the sky's the limit once you've kind of got everything hooked up um but if i were to go into this group and remove the the button from use here i can now use it so i could now assign it to media play run file setting default input and output devices that kind of thing so for the moment let's carry on as we were and talk about lights so we were really lucky here in that this board is well designed and the automatic indicator works. But what if it isn't? What if it's not working? <laughs> so a lot of cheaper boards and a lot of kind of mid price boards as well act very strangely when it comes to lights. And it's very difficult to find out how they function and how to trigger them. If you're super lucky, the manufacturer release a PDF for how to address them. Um, basically exactly which MIDI messages to send. In the case of this board, that's exactly what is available, but that's very, very rare. Now, if you've bought something that's pretty top of the line, a lot of Novation stuff, um, a lot of Akai things as well, actually, um, the automatic indicator here will probably work absolutely fine. But things like motorized faders and LED indicators for volume might not work quite so smoothly. So for this, if you're lucky, like I said, and you found a PDF, awesome. You can scroll through that and we can create a new control, set it to an indicator, call it knob one LEDs, and it'll tell you exactly what command, which control, which minimum max values and all that kind of thing to send. Um, if you're super unlucky and you can't find anything and there's nothing online and you can't pick apart profiles for other pieces of software like DAWs, then you're down to testing one by one, which is not fun. So I know for a fact, because I've got the documentation for this, that um, the indicators for these LEDs are channel zero, control 48, um, and then the minimum value is 33 and the maximum value is 43. Now, can you imagine trying to find this stuff out by yourself? It's, it's pretty horrible. So, down here, you've got a test value. What this will use, it will use the channel, control, and command you have sent, and then send whichever value. So here in this min and max, I'm saying that if the volume is zero, the software should send the value 33 to the board. And if the volume is 100%, it should send the value 43 to the board and you know go between those two values. So if I send 35 here and send test value, you see these LEDs light up. If I pump it up to 40, see we get even more, and 43 should be all the way to the top. Awesome. So in actual fact, on this board, different um, <laughs> different different values along this scale offer different sort of 
options. I can't even figure out how to trigger them now. It's yeah, you can kind of see. So this has got both pan left and pan right, as well as a sort of butterfly one. So 33 to 43 is strictly just from here to the other side. But yeah, lights are horrible. It's disgusting. I can't find a way to automate this. If anyone finds a way, good God, please tell me. And I would love to put it in because I find it frustrating. It's bloody frustrating for everyone. This is why we need more presets in MIDI Mixer. <laughs> but for now, if I manage to find that indicator, <laughs> ran terrible, if I manage to find that indicator, and I've got all the values set up, then if I go back to groups, we can set that as the indicator for this particular thing. Um, and you can see now there's an indicator here. If I turn the volume up, it moves up with it. If I turn the volume down, it moves down with it. And again, that's two way. So if this turns it up or some other application turns it up, it will automatically figure that out. Now, it's worth mentioning for this board, this is kind of, I mean, it's really cool. I like being able to just glance down and see the status of everything. Um, at the same time, it's just some LEDs, right? But on more substantial mixes, you would use this exact same technique to control motorized faders, or you could even use it at the moment for things like VU and peak meters, though proper support that shows the live volume for those coming through is coming later. Um, but yeah, if you had a big old board with like, you know, 20 faders and they were all motorized assigned to different apps and you could see them all going up and down, good God, that'd be cool, right? Um, so yeah, I think including my rant, that about covers everything you'd need to set up a custom profile. Um, obviously, you'd now need to go through and add all of the different buttons on your board and, and assign them to whatever you want. But that guides you through it and you have that now. Now... I will say, if you've come all the way to the end of this video, then please, please, if you've made a device, consider sharing it. Um, there's a big old share button here. If you hit it, you get a share link. And if you post that on the Discord or anywhere, really, then anyone with the software can import your profile and use it themselves. That also means that I can import your profile and I can add it as a preset. So everybody else that uses the software with your device, it will work out of the box. Super valuable. Please do it. Um, and if you've watched all the way to the end, you're obviously either very interested in MIDI or very excited about getting it set up. Um, so I do hope that you do you consider that. And the more we have these shared, the more devices we can support out of the box and someone can literally just plug their device in and it works. So if you have any questions, visit the Discord, please share, and I'll see you later. Bye.